Welcome to part six of the best cryptocurrency trading course for beginners. This is all about trading psychology, and this is probably the most important video of the series. Now, if you have not watched the previous videos in the series, make sure that you go back and watch them, but this is arguably the most important part of the entire series. Now, we've gone through and we've shown you exact strategies that have edge that are proven with data. And we've shown these to a lot of other people. And for some reason, people still aren't able to have success trading, even though they have a winning strategy. And this comes down to everything that has to do with your psychology and your emotions, what's going on in between your head. As you can see depicted here, trading success is really divided into 80 and 20. 80% 80 of it is the psychology and 20% of it is the mechanics, which is the strategy, the skill, the, the execution, which is really the easy part, which we've covered pretty much throughout the first five videos in this series. So this video, we're going to be talking about all psychology. So let's get into this. Here's what we're actually going to be covering throughout this video. The first thing that we're going to be covering is something called the five fundamental truths. Okay. The next thing that we're going to be covering is called the seven keys to consistency. And the last thing that we're going to be covering is something called the four primary trading fears. Okay. So this is how the video is going to be broken down. And this is a rough summary of one of my favorite books, which is called trading in the zone. It's this book by uh, Mark Douglas, and it is fantastic. It's the best book that I've ever read on trading psychology. Now to get into what this actually means, let me explain it for you. Okay. So the reason why traders are a lot of the times unsuccessful is because of our emotions. Okay. And we can have a range of emotions while trading, right? We can have fear, we can have greed, we can have confusion, we can have frustration, right? We can have, you know, overconfidence is another emotion that we can experience when trading. And basically this concept of actually trading in the zone means that you are basically trading without emotions, okay? And losing traders, they trade based on their emotions and winning traders trade in the zone. This is where the winners are at. They're trading in the zone. They're just executing trades based on their plan. And they're doing this without any sort of emotional response to it. Okay. This is when you actually get in the zone, the five fundamental truths, the seven keys to consistency and the four primary fears, understanding these will help you get into this zone and trade in the zone like winning traders do. Okay. Now, with that being said, you're probably familiar with technical analysis at this point, and you've probably heard of fundamental analysis at this point, but this video is really going to be talking about mental analysis and understanding the mental side of trading, which is really the key to doing this. Now, winning traders, they also understand that they simply just need to trade with an edge. Okay. And if they trade with an edge, which is basically just a higher probability that something happens then something else. That's all that the edge is. Okay. So they understand that if they trade an edge with a large enough sample size, they know that they're going to be profitable traders. And the way that winning traders actually look at losses is they basically see loss is the cost of doing business. Okay. It's part of the game and it's part of trading and overcoming and learning how to deal with losers is one of the biggest keys that you could learn in becoming a successful trader. Now, one other thing that you need to understand is that every single trade is a completely random event. Okay. Meaning that it's completely independent of whatever's happened in the past. Every single new trade that you put on has a completely random outcome. Okay. And I'll get into this a little bit more as we start going through here. So let's first take a look at the five fundamental truths of the market. Okay. And here's what they are. Number one is, is that anything can happen in the market at any time. Okay. So anything can happen. Okay. So you just have to learn to accept this, that price could skyrocket up. Price could skyrocket down. Price could go flat. Price could do something completely enormous. And you have to come to facts and come to truth and understand that literally anything can happen in the market. Okay. And the best part about this is that you may be thinking, well, how can I possibly become a successful trader if anything can happen in the market? Well, the second thing is, is that you don't need to know what happens next 
in order to make money in the market. Now, this is kind of relieving, right? Because anything can happen, but you also don't need to know what's going to happen next in order to make money in the market. And that's the beautiful thing about that is this idea of trading psychology is to get you to think in terms of probability versus trying to predict the market, which as we know, anything can happen in the market and every single trade is a completely random event. So trying to predict the market is pretty much impossible. Okay. So the second thing is you don't need to know what happens next in order to make money. Okay. The next thing is that there's a random distribution between wins and losses. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that you could lose five trades in a row and your system may not be broken at that time. You could uh, win five trades in a row and then this has nothing to do with what's to happen in the future, okay? It doesn't matter if you're on a long streak of winners. It doesn't mean this next trade is likely to be a winner. It doesn't also mean that it's a higher chance that this next trade is gonna be a loser. Every single trade has a random uh, outcome and it also has a random distribution between winners and losers, okay? The fourth thing is the, the understanding of an edge, which we talked about briefly earlier, which is the edge is just a higher probability, okay? That something is gonna happen other than something else, okay? So it's just a higher probability. It doesn't mean that it's for fact gonna happen. It just means that there's a higher probability that when this happens, this result will happen, okay? So it doesn't mean it's always gonna happen and you could have several losses in a row, but you need to understand your edge, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more later on. Okay, number five is every moment in the market is unique, okay? So every single moment is unique, and this is kind of tying in to the fact that, you know, the, the market is completely random, and we don't know what's gonna happen next, and the great part about this is, is that we don't actually need to know what happens next in order to make money. Okay, next thing that we're gonna talk about here is something called the gambler's fallacy, okay? And all using coins, for example. So let's say that we toss a coin and we get a heads, okay? Then we take another coin toss, we get another heads. We do it again, we get another heads, we do it again, we get another heads, we get it again, we do another heads. Now, this is the gambler's fallacy. The gambler's fallacy is that, okay, well maybe, since I've won five in a row, maybe this next one is going to be a heads as well. So I'm going to bet on heads, right? Or you may bet that, oh my gosh, I've had five winners in a row. I've had five uh, heads in a row. I'm going to bet tails on this next one. And this is actually incorrect thinking. This is the gambler's fallacy. They think that because of what's happened previously, this will determine what's to happen likely next. And this is a really big error in trading that people will think, okay, let's say for example, that I had a loser, I had a loser, I had a loser, I had a loser, I had a loser. So I had five losing trades in a row, okay? Then traders a lot of the time will think, okay, well, my system's broken, or maybe, you know, I just got to keep trading. My next one's going to be a winner. And this again is trying to, uh, you know, you know, deal with this gambler's fallacy that this previous event somehow predict the future. And that's not the case. Okay. And it's the same thing with winners. Let's say that you get five winners in a row. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. And this is what could lead to overconfidence. One of those emotions, or this could also lead to get, uh, greed or say you got five in a row. Say you think, wow, this strategy is just so good that, you know, I've won five in a row. You know, I'm going to double my position size and I'm going to bet bigger on this next one. And you don't know because every single outcome, just like flipping a, a quarter, has a 50% chance of being heads and also has a 50% chance of being tails, regardless of what happened in the past. Okay. So it's really, really important to understand that. And it's also to, uh, important to understand that you need to be able to fully accept the risk. Each trade that you put on, you're gonna put on a predefined amount of risk, okay? And you need to understand that, okay, I'm risking 1% of my account or I'm risking 2% of my account. You have to be totally okay with that number and understanding that you can lose this and if you lose this, you should be completely unemotional, okay? So these are the five fundamental truths. Moving on, next we're gonna be talking about the seven keys to consistency, okay? And here's what the seven keys to consistency are. Number one is you need to objectively identify your edge, okay? What does that mean? That means that 
you know exactly when you're supposed to enter a trade and you know exactly when you're set to exit a trade, okay? It means that it's objective. There's no subjectivity to it. There's no thinking to it. It's so objectively defined that it's it's a no-brainer. Okay, this meets my edge or this doesn't meet my edge and I don't enter the trade, okay? It needs to be that simple and it needs to be that objective, okay? Based on your rules. Okay, number two is you want to predefine the risk on every trade, okay? So every trade, you need to know how much money you're betting on this trade, or you need to know how you know how much percentage of your account you're risking on this trade prior to actually putting on the trade, which is really, really important. And again, this goes back to what we were just talking about, is that you also need to fully accept this risk that you're taking on each trade. If you can't fully accept the risk, then you're likely trading too much money per trade, or you're risking too much per trade, okay? The third thing, which I kind of jumped the gun there, was uh, completely um, accept the risk, okay? Which I, I just talked about there, just completely accepting it, okay? The fourth thing is to execute your edge without hesitation or reservation, okay? And uh, a lot of the times traders, when they get into trading, they are hesitant about getting into a trade or they're uh, reserved about getting into a trade. But likely this means that you probably haven't objectively defined your edge, okay? If you haven't objectively defined it, meaning you know exactly what counts in order to get into a trade, then you're going to hesitate or you're going to be reserved when taking the trade. And winning traders or traders that are trading in the zone, they trade without hesitation and they also trade without reservation about the trades, okay? Fifth thing, okay, pay yourself as the market makes it available, okay? Okay, don't just go out and take out X percentage every single month. Pay yourself as it actually becomes available to you, okay? Rather than saying that I'm gonna pay myself every week or every month, no, pay yourself as the market makes it available to you, okay? Also, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do to become consistent is monitor your errors and your bad habits, okay? So did I take profit too early? Did I get hesitant when entering the trade? Did I not let this trade run long enough? Did I um, did I violate one of my rules and my edge, right? All of these things come into play and a lot of people talk about having some sort of trading journal and this is so you can monitor your errors or your bad habits, okay? Seventh is never violate these principles. Okay, if you want to be consistent, then you got to follow one through six and you got to never violate these principles. That's the key to actually being a profitable trader, okay, and a winning trader that trades in the zone. Now, with that being said, how else can you develop confidence? This is really key, okay? If you want to really develop confidence, then you need to back test, okay? Back testing, this builds your confidence a lot. Okay, because you're familiar with the edge. Don't just take, you know, my advice, you know, even though the strategies that I showed you in the previous video, they do have edge. Don't just take it for my word because you're not going to have the confidence that I have because I have actually back tested the strategies. Okay, and if you go on a streak of losers, say you lose five in a row, you're going to think, oh, the system's crap. And you're going to do what a lot of novice traders, which is called system hopping. Okay. And you're gonna, you know, you know, you're gonna get on this this new system here, and then you're gonna start winning, and you're like, yeah, this is great, this is great, and then you go through losing trades, you're like, oh crap, this is, you know, I'm back down to break even, and you're gonna go, okay, well maybe I should go to this new system, and you're gonna ride this trade for a little bit, ride this system for a little bit. I need a new system, I need a new system, right? And this is an error that a lot of people work simply because they don't have confidence in their edge mostly because they haven't back tested it. So what I recommend is back testing at least 20 trades, okay? If you can do 100, that's even better. If you can do 100, your confidence is gonna be even higher. And then after you've back tested, either trade a demo account or a small account and do 20 live trades, okay? With a small amount of money too. So that way you're not just using hindsight bias by looking at the past, but you're actually using a small amount of money or a demo account to actually trade the forward market, which is a totally different game. Now, if you do this, your confidence is gonna rise a lot and you're going to trust your edge more and you're gonna trade in the zone even more, okay? Now, last thing, let's talk about the four primary trading fears, okay? So there's four primary trading fears. 
The first one is having an attitude about being wrong, okay? And the thing is, is that if you're wrong, a lot of the times you are going to have some sort of attitude or you are going to have some sort of emotional response to it. And the, your attitude needs to change. Instead of saying, you know, what am I doing wrong? Or why is the market out to get me? Or why is the market being manipulated? You need to think in different. You need to, again, think in terms of probabilities, okay? That's all you're doing is you're a robot. You're executing your edge and you're trading in terms of probability based on what we've already tested. Remember, we did the back test and we did the small or the demo test moving forward. Okay, so you need to change your attitude about being wrong and understand that being wrong is just simply a part of the business. It's a part of, uh, you know, being a trader, okay? The next primary trading fear is uh, losing money, okay? People have a stronger emotional response to losing something than they actually do to earning money, which is an interesting concept. So you need to understand that you're gonna have a lot of fear around losing money, and this could cause you to trade your system differently, but you really wanna be careful about that because again, we're just trading in the zone. We're trading without emotions or we're trading without yeah any emotions. We're just trading objectively, right? Number three, missing out. Okay, this is a big one in the crypto space. We call this FOMO. We see it happen all the time. Say a coin pumps and you know, you're like, crap, I'm late to this. You get fear of missing out. You get FOMO and you FOMO into a coin. This is never a good idea. Okay. Just FOMOing in because you see other people doing it because you see price doing it. This fear of missing out is a, is a huge thing. Okay. And then the last thing is leaving money on the table. Okay. So this is kind of the last fear that people have is like, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't close the trade because what if it goes up even higher? And so they have this fear of leaving money on the table. So it's important to recognize that when you are trading, keep these four things in mind and you'll become a lot more successful trader. Okay. With that being said, if this video was helpful, then go ahead and like subscribe and turn on post notifications. And I will also include another really, really helpful right here.